Hello and welcome to High Flyers on the Glasgow Chamber of Commerce YouTube channel. I'm Russell Walker. My guest today is a bit alternative. His name is Campbell Ewer and he runs a franchise called The Alternative Board. We're going to get into that during the show so that you can find out what it's all about. Campbell started off with an engineering degree and then moved into the car business. He worked his way through that through a whole bunch of companies like uh, BMW, Rover, uh, Aston Martin, Rolls-Royce to get to eventually where he is now, the alternative board, which is his happy place. Campbell, welcome to High Flyers. My goodness. Uh, it's, a, it's a long journey, so I'll try not to bore you with it. But um, I, I love the car industry. I spent a lot of time going from sort of engineering and developing cars and developing car factories and then running uh, running the back end of car factories, being a, a production manager. And I love that to bits. However, I had a really bad um, car accident, believe it or not, when I was uh, was about 30. Um, I fell asleep and drove into a tree at, at 70 miles an hour. Um, and at the time, I had a three-week-old uh, son uh, and a 12-month-old daughter uh, and a wife who was from Glasgow as well, but this was this was down in, in England. So I lost my memory, believe it or not, from the accident. I had a bad brain injury and I broke both my legs. Uh, and being honest, I, I was fine because I couldn't remember anything. But my wife um, didn't enjoy that period at all uh, with a couple of, you know, a baby and a toddler and a husband that couldn't remember who she was. Campbell, you are one lucky dude to be... <laughs> no, I mean, you are. You absolutely... I, I, I agree. 100, you know it. Because yeah. that is, I mean, that is a very, very... It's a shocking story, actually. It's a shocking yeah. story from, from where you were to, to, you know, how long did it take you to recover fully? A year or um, six months? I bet I'd, I'd say about that. I was off work for five months, and even when I was yeah. back at work, uh, I wasn't 100% for a while. Definitely not. Wow. So, yeah, good point. Amazing, amazing. I mean, let's take my hat off to you. The, the resilience that you you showed that you showed there is incredible. 70 miles an hour into a tree. I still, to this day, get a little bit unnerved by this. So, like I said, I've been, I've been off work for five months, and um, it's my first day back, so... First day back at work, so I'm quite nervous about it. And it was, it was obviously one of the, well, not obviously, it was one of these kind of, you go back for a couple of hours on your first day, uh, or your first week, you go back for three hours on your second week, and, and you yeah. gradually uh, build it up. So um, my first day, I'm a, I'm a get, I think it's, I think it was 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock. So Susie and my wife drives me out to be there at 10 o'clock, and the tree that I hit obviously was on the way to work. So we see the tree standing there, you know, it's, First time I've seen it in ages, and it's like kind of, ooh, ooh. Um, and then twelve o'clock comes, and Susie comes to pick me up, and she goes, "You won't believe this." And I was like, "What?" She says, "Just, just wait, watch this." So we drive back, and in those two hours, the tree had fallen down, and th this tree is an oak. You know, the car it was the, the 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 diameter of the the base of the oak tree was bigger than the car. This is a massive oak tree that I'd plowed wow. headlong into. And for whatever, and it is, it, I'm not that spiritual a person, but that really threw me wow, in terms of- that's mad. That tree, in those two hours, out of those five months, it decided to fall down in those two hours. And you're that just like, is oh. mad. And Susie just said, it's just a message that you've, you've beaten it, get on with it now, Campbell, you're back at work, right? Normal life resume sort of thing. Um, so we had a lot of talk and a lot of chat um, about what does the future look like uh, and all the rest of it. And we decided to come back uh, to Scotland, come back to Glasgow where our family uh, was, our, our old friends were, if you like. So we made that decision uh, and I got a job um, as it, with a, a consultancy company called McKinsey. Um, and that was all about a transformation um exercise if you like that they had with uh, with a, uh, a partner company in the construction industry and, and i really enjoyed getting involved in that i really enjoyed the how do you make things better how do you really analyze a business understand the goods and the not so goods and then work with the management team to make it better to make more money to make it more enjoyable etc etc and i got i got a lot out of that and then as, as that sort of project moved on and became more steady state business rather than needing a consultant like me um moved around a, a couple of other um, industries, if you like. I was in oil and gas for about five years. Um, and it was around about that time I decided, you know, I'd quite like to set up my own business. I'd quite like to get involved in small businesses. I had quite a few small uh, business um, friends that own small businesses. 
Um, and they said so much good things about what they got out of it. Don't get me wrong, they gave me the impression it was tough. It was a tough gig. Um, but they said enough for me to think, okay, that, that's maybe where my future lies. I've done 20 odd years in, in sort of corporate world, if I can call it that, and I've got 20 odd years left, so so at least, hopefully. So why don't we, uh, why don't we do, do something like that? So I actually, I actually looked, I looked around for a business to acquire uh, with a bit of support, for, with a bit of funding, if you like. And I must have met, gosh, 40 or 50 business owners in the central belt of Scotland. Uh, really interesting people. I really enjoyed uh, meeting them. But, but I also got a little bit of a, wow, this is a tough gig. Running a small business is hard. Uh, and you can never be a master of everything. And you can never quite afford all the help that you need. Um, so it's tough to, to have your own small business and run it and run it well and make money in, in, in even the current climate back then, before COVID and before uh, where we are at the moment. It was, it was tough. Um, so I decided not to invest uh, money in a business that I had only just met, if that makes sense. Uh, and around about that time, the alternative board came along. And I'd be honest, I can't remember if I found it or it found me, but it's just seemed like a really good idea. It was a big um, community, it's a franchise business that started in the States, gosh, about 30 years ago now. And it, it had grown and it was still growing well. Uh, there was only one other one in Scotland, so it hadn't been heard of at all in Scotland. And there was maybe about 30 or 35 in England and about 500 around the rest of the world. But I just really liked the concept of business owners helping business owners and having a, a community of good tools, good information, and just being able to support and help small business owners without having to pay, you know, big consultancy fees, etc. So. Long story short, that's why I moved. That's how and why I moved from the car industry to the alternative board. Now, there is a, a theory that business owners don't help other business owners, especially in small business, because there's not much of a pie to go around. But is that maybe a, an outmoded, outdated way of thinking? It's a good question. Um, I think there's a little bit of that. I think we're, we're, I've, seen it, I've seen it more, actually, in the last year, where people are looking to collaborate, people are looking to help each other out. As, as the world becomes more and more interconnected, you know, we're already a global organization, if you like, um, us businesses around the world. But even within that, we're becoming a lot better at helping each other out and using the network. So yeah, I, I think if you look back to quite a few of the businesses I saw when I was, I was look, looking uh, to purchase, we've got these 20 customers, we've used the same 20 customers for the last 20 years. We know them really well. They'll always come to us. They'll always be good. Um, and that kind of business is, is becoming less and less. There's a lot more flexibility, agility required to, to be able to find more customers and be able to, whether it's set up a, a new website or get involved in Zoom or be able to work internationally uh, in a virtual world. Things are changing and they're changing quick. Uh, and being able to expect a business owner to know it all, I, I think is just unfair. Uh, I think we need to use the, the wider community um, better going forward. So what specifically then do you offer uh, with the alternative board? What, what would you offer a small business owner? Well, it's, it's a combination of probably three or four things. So uh, the board, if I can call it that, is a group of six to eight business owners. They're all in the same area. So let's say they're in the Glasgow area. They're all non-competing. So, so they're from completely different sectors but they're all experienced and they've all run their businesses for a period of time. And what happens every month is we meet and we go through what are the key challenges in each of the business owners' businesses. And, and we help each other problem solve. And it's really interesting. A lot of the members are now at the point where they think, I get more from other people's problems because there's so much relevance. At the end of the day, a business is a business. We're trying to get customers. We're trying to do a good job. We're trying to have good employees. And we're trying to make sure we do the best and, and make some money at the end of it. That doesn't matter whether uh, you're a manufacturing company or a digital company or a fish and chip shop. You're, you're, you're doing similar things to please your customers. And it's, it's really interesting watching having different backgrounds and having that diversity of experience. You get better answers at the end of the day. So I spend time with each of uh, the members going through, making sure that they're comfortable that they know uh, where they need to go. If there is any help, any other connections or any more work that needs to be done, I help make sure that happens so that they, they can get 
to where they want their businesses to get to. They can make those improvements. And then there's the, the kind of bigger side of things as well. We have about six or 7,000 members worldwide and we have a community, a kind of, it's like a LinkedIn, but it's like a help desk LinkedIn, if you like, where we each support and help each other. If you've got a question about anything, um, there'll be somebody there that can pick it up, that can sort of say, well, this is what I did a few years ago, whether you happen to be a funeral director or a, a, an insolvency practitioner or a attorney, you know, any of those things. There'll, there'll be somebody in the network that knows it and you can speak about it. So I think having those combinations of things uh, is, is a lot better than maybe having one non-exec director or bringing a consultant in for a period of time. We, we very much view it as a, a long-term thing. Our average member at the moment is... It's just less than five years, the amount of time that they stay. So the people aren't in it just for a short answer. And everybody around the table knows that. And, and I am looking for long-term benefits for businesses. So I think being able to offer that long-term business, that, those long-term benefits for a, for a reasonable amount of money is, is what makes it different, I think. How difficult was it to convince, uh, you know, a disparate number of businesses or types of businesses that you were the answer to their problems. So one person kind of had the, the handle on all these different problems because they must face different problems um, from each other. How, how, how did you persuade them that you were the guy to go to? It's, it's a good question. And it's, a, it's an ongoing challenge, if you like. You know, everybody's, uh, everyone's a bit unsure about, mm, I've not heard about this before. What, what's this like? How do I know that's going to be good? People who don't even know my business, they're going to help me in my business. So. The best way to do it, believe it or not, is to try it. And, and that's the, the conversations I have with a lot of prospects that they kind of get the theory, but they don't really feel it. So, so I, I organize things called taster boards once every month or every couple of months. And I bring um, people along, interested business owners, and they'll have a go. Bring your bring your key challenge. What's, what's your biggest concern at the moment? What's keeping you awake at night? Bring that to the table. Let's have a go at it and let's see what you get out of it. And it's really interesting to see after that, what can we go on? I'd never thought about that before. That was a really good idea. That, that makes so much sense. I'm going to speak to that person that they, you know, they gave me the car for. So those kind of conversations, we actually kind of realised, hmm, that makes sense. Um, the other thing I noticed is it's a bit of a confidence thing. Quite often, um, I, I meet a lot of business owners that they've, they've got some really good ideas, but they're really busy. And if you were to ask them one big thing they'd want to do, they'd say, oh, let's, I'll, I'll make it up. I'll, I want to create a new website. Now, how long have you been wanting to do that? Oh, four or five years. And, and then they'll come to a taster board and they'll, they'll kind of go through it. And they'll go, why am, I, why am I waiting? Why am I not just getting on with it? Let's just make the decision to do it and make it happen. So there's a little bit of accountability that comes from the board just because there's, there's other experience around the table. There's people that have done it before. And you know they want to help you, so well, why wouldn't I take that up? Why wouldn't I do it and go and make it happen? So, what we find is people tend to make decisions a bit quicker, and as a result of that, you know turnover tends to go up a little bit, and businesses tend to be a bit better. So, it's it's one of those things. Thankfully, um, because it's a franchise, and I never been honest, I never thought I would buy a franchise, but because it's a franchise, there's a lot of data there in terms of what were businesses like and business owners like when they came in. So how much money were they making and, and, you know, what was their kind of perception of the tenant board and how has it progressed through time? Uh, and what we find is I think we're at 27% year on year annual turnover increase. Um, so, you know, you, the average member's business grows three times the size uh, in the time that they're a member of the alternative board. And the thing I say is you don't need to speak to me about it. My members will say similar things. So I'm more than happy to introduce people to my members to explain that. I imagine your head must be absolutely full of just loads of information about different businesses, about, you know, um, grants maybe that people could be eligible for or strategies that, that, that might work for them. How do you manage that in your own head? <laughs> uh, it was interesting. I was walking out of a board, um, well, not... Not physically, because it wasn't it wasn't there, obviously, but virtually I was walking out of a board a couple of months ago, uh, and one of the guys was saying to me, he says, you're so lucky. And I said, what do you, what do you mean? He says, we all come and we all give you all of our problems, all of our challenges, and we go through and we come up with answers, and you must learn so much from all the boards that you sit on, and, and we pay you for it. And I kind of went, 
Actually, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. So I, I love what I do. I do learn a, a huge amount from it. Um, I was, I'd honestly say I've learned more in the, the last three years when I've been running the alternative board than I did in the 20-odd years previous. So, yeah, how do I actually keep that in my head? I, say, I won't show you around my desk, but there's loads and loads of notes that I take, and I've become very good at just keeping records of what people are saying and what people are thinking and things to check out and websites to look at and grants to investigate, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, I, I do spend a lot more of my time than I thought I would doing that kind of stuff. Let me take you back to the the accident, Campbell, if if you if you wouldn't mind, because when you told me about that, um, one thing did occur to me, and and that is, and you, you may not characterise it like this, but it seemed fairly obvious to me that that was what you would literally describe as a near death experience. I mean, you know, to to break your legs, to have a brain injury, to lose your memory, it's pretty serious. H how did that, when you came out of that situation? inform the way you then went about your business career? It is a great question. Um, it's, it's definitely affected me. Um, not in, always in the ways I, I thought. So um, you heard me talking a minute ago there about I love what I do and I get a lot out of it. So that was one of the reasons that I decided to have my own small business because you're your own boss and you can engage with customers that you like you can you know you can make um decisions you can you can do work in areas that you want to do work in. so so i really like that i get a lot out of having a business don't get me wrong like i was saying it's a tough gig running your own business but i love it so that makes a big difference um one thing i did think would change and in hindsight it's not not as much as it would have is i've always had a very high work ethic so one of the reasons i i, I crashed was because I was working too hard and I just fell asleep at the wheel from, from not enough sleep. Um, and I was expecting to become a work shy, if you like, not do so much work at all. Um, and although I, I don't work there as I do, I, I feel that I, I've got it at a good level now. So yeah, I still got a really high work ethic. I still do as much as I can, but I know where to draw the line better than I did uh, before I got in that car that day. So what's the, the future in terms of business i mean if i come to you with a problem with my business because of covid or whatever it would be what what's your what's your advice looking forward over the next i don't know six months nine months 12 months i'm not fishing for a, advice a, here for free by the way <laughs> but, but. so as i suppose what, what i've been seeing and what i've been hearing uh, generally if you like and, and none of these will be huge surprises to you i suppose is um, we're in a we're in a bit of a bubble at the moment, and what I mean by that is, um, there's lots of things happening that are in response to COVID at the moment. After COVID, whenever that may be, or when things begin to uh, ramp down, they will still be affected, but maybe not to the same level. So, so what I mean by that is, um, e-commerce, people are buying. Uh, we can't go out to pubs, we can't go out to restaurants at the moment. So everybody's buying their beer online. There's loads of e-commerce um, that, that's kicking off now and doing that and a lot of people are, are buying their beer and their, their wine in the supermarkets etc um, do I think that will come back to uh, to where it was previously being honest I don't uh, I think there'll be less people going out there'll be people a bit nervous to go out for a meal they might not want to have the the, the drinks that they've had they might not want to get drunk and cuddle a stranger the way that we used to do uh, all those all those months and years ago so I do see the level changing, but maybe not to the, the level that it's at at the moment where obviously nothing's open and, and, and we're all doing it. So, so business is going to, and that, I'm just using um, hospitality as an example there, but business is going to change to a different place from where it is now and also to where it was before. I, I think the secret is to be able to try and work out what does that mean to you? What does that mean to your business? Um, you'll be in a different place now than you were, but you're going to a different place as well. So, so what is it that you need to do, uh, you know, to optimize that for yourself? Obviously, there's going to be a lot more virtual uh, organization and virtual business. How can you make sure that you can get the most of it? Communities and networks are things that words that I keep hearing a lot of the time. So, um, having online places to go, being part of communities been able to utilize that and collaboration, the word we were using earlier, been able to do more of that going forward, I think it's only going to help you. If you expect to be a lone wolf running business, I think that will be much harder 
going forward um, than, than it is, let's say, at the moment. And looking at the way we do things just now virtually, um, you know, most most people are not in offices at the moment. Um, and, and frankly, I, I guess that, you know, if you look at your five day week, when things do get back to some sort of normality, most people still won't be back in the office more than two or three days a week, which is actually probably quite a healthy thing. Um, and it will certainly cut costs for a lot of businesses who might who might be able to you know share their office or might even be able to get rid of offices yeah. altogether. Um, but but looking at the way we do things virtually now, the one thing that does occur to me, or two things actually, one is that there's no real human contact, and secondly, um, while working from home might be convenient for quite a percentage of the time. Traditionally, you came home, didn't you, to escape? <laughs> you know, at the end of a, a long day, you, you, your home was 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 almost your safe place. Now it is your place. So, yeah. w what kind of future does that open up to us, and, and how are we going to deal with that? Good question. I think we're all going to have sort of hybrid models of what we've got and what we've had. So. Um, do I expect people to be working from home more? Yes, I do. Do I expect people will be going into work? Yes, I do. But it'll be a hybrid of them. And I think if you can set yourself up to best manage that hybrid, then you're going to be in the best position. I was speaking to one of my members, actually, he was talking about he's reorganised his house. So basically, he's got like an office in his house now, but it's one that he's, he locks the door whenever he's done. He goes away. There's almost like barriers go up, and that's him finished his work. Whereas previous, he'd been working in the dining room uh, the table and just it became part of life, if that makes sense. So I think being able to have it set yourself up to have that hybrid, to have those clear boundaries, I think will make a big difference going forward. What I see, I mean, we had a board meeting the other day and I asked the question, what do you want to, to look like uh, after COVID when, you, when the lockdowns are lifted? Uh, and the response I got was actually, we'd quite like to have a hybrid. So let's have one meeting in, in person where we go out for a meal afterwards and we, you know, we enjoy each other's company and all the rest of it. But let's do the other one as a, as a, as a Zoom because we don't need to travel anywhere. We could do it from a home, et cetera. And they get, the kind of phrase you use, 90%. It's, they get 90% of a real meeting um, from a Zoom meeting. Not quite there. Um, so let's do a bit of reality, but it's there's efficiencies to be made. So I, I think it, for everybody, it's going to be about finding those hybrids that best work for you and work for your employees, actually. Uh, we've had some really interesting conversations in some of the boards recently about my employee doesn't want to come back to work. He really doesn't like it. Um, he's, you know, he wants to stay at home. He doesn't think it's, it's safe enough. And, you know, he's, he's got uh, parents, grandparents, if you like, that he's, he's nervous for. So, so what do I do? Uh, you know, that's sort of typical questions that we get asked. And I think there's always going to be a little bit more tension for a while. So I, th I think it's really important that business owners think about all the, the conditions and what they can do to best give a, uh, a hybrid, I suppose, a, a, a good model for their employees so that they feel that they can contribute best at work, but also that they feel that they're, they're safe and they've got the, the surroundings of their, of their home if, if, if that needs to be. Maybe because I am a, a, a real optimist. I mean, that that you know, it's positivity is 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 really what I'm all about. Maybe I am naive in thinking that usually when you talk about bad situations, they're never quite as bad as you expect them to be or think they might be. So, so I'm looking to the future and thinking, look, it's you know, it's pretty bad now. You know, I get that, but going forward, it's probably going to get better. Um, even though we might have COVID style virus outbreaks, who knows how many times over the next few decades. But from your point of view and from the people you're talking to, is that optimism there, Campbell? Do, do, do you sense that there's an optimism there or do you think people really do feel as if they've just been bludgeoned by what has happened over the last 10 months to a year? I think there's definitely an optimism, and I think there is. There are businesses out there that are doing well. Um, I've got um, I've got 16 members, if you like, at the moment, uh, across a whole suite of different um, sectors. Um, some in hospitality, some that have been negatively affected by by COVID, and some that have been positively affected by COVID, like e-commerce, etc. Um, but all bar one of them at the moment are actually doing better. They're making more money 
than they were pre-COVID. And, and I have to ask myself, why is that? What's the reason for that? It's not, don't get me wrong, it's not, it's not the alternative board, it's not just me. But I think there's an approach about being able to, you know, be open to what people's ideas are, being open to sharing, be open to collaborating. These are all things that TAB promotes, but having those kind of values to actually be flexible and, and take yourself and take the business forward, I think are going to be really strong and really required going forward. And I'm seeing businesses that are doing that, no matter what the sector, having a great attitude as an owner to really, what's the word everyone uses, has been using, pivot. And if you need to change the business, change the business and then move forward and, and take it where you need to. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I so see that there's tough times ahead and there's some there's businesses that just can't get by from the, the situation that they're in. That doesn't mean that's forever though. So I definitely believe, and I'm a bit of an opti optimist as well, I definitely believe that in the longer term, we will come out as a stronger economy uh, and a stronger group of people, if you like, um, because of what's happened. And I know, you know, certain sectors have always believed in this, the charity sector, for example, but do you get the impression now that most businesses understand that this phrase paying forward actually will work for them in the long term? So there is more collaboration and people aren't as tight and closed in and, and saying, you know, this is mine and you can't have it. Do you, do you get the impression that that attitude is actually going to be quite important going forward? A hundred percent. I've actually got um, some contacts that I know where um, before they wouldn't have really spoken to each other because they're in competition. But what they've been doing is, is actually working together and collaborating on what do they need to do to help each other going forward. So I'm seeing more and more of that going forward. And don't get me wrong, it's been around for a while. But I think the they kind of, as you put it, they kind of hold it on and and not wanting to let your secrets out, if you like. That's that's only going to cause pain in the future because you're just not going to be quick and agile enough to keep up with the rest of the world. Campbell, you're listening. That's been fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, I get the fact that you're optimistic for the future and uh, it's been great to, to talk to you about the alternative board and what you can offer and hopefully a little glimpse into what's uh, awaiting us in the next few months. <laughs> you too. Well, thanks very much. It's been great to speak to you too.